I have spent a seriously ridiculous amount of time trying to figure out how I want to start a video like this. Let's just start off with the basics. Hi guys, my name is Matthew. I run this channel called Matt Vid Pro AI and I talk a lot about just new upcoming AI tech. I've been following the AI technological race for a little over two years now, at least publicly. I've been watching AI since before that time, and I have always, since my inception as a human being on this planet, been very interested in technology. So, the goal of today's video is actually going to be describing or presenting a point of view on AI technology that is very objective, as objective as I think that I can make it. In a philosophical sense, true objectivity doesn't even exist, but despite that argument, I want to create a discussion today. We're going to talk about AI technology. What's the deal with it? I'd love to explain the propensities of AI technology and how I think it fits as a puzzle piece in our world. And this video is going to be for everyone, whether or not you are brand new to AI technology, whether you're very skeptical, very critical of AI technology, or maybe even if you are a regular user of AI technology and a fan of it, let's say. So with that contextual yap session aside, let's actually talk about AI. What is AI? Let's define it. When you hear someone talk about AI these days, they're usually referring to some sort of a model that runs on a computer that can generate either imagery, text, video, audio. The most mainstream one we can think of is ChatGPT, which is simply a text generator. It generates, it conjures language based on language that you input inside of it. Now I want to switch gears and talk a little bit about language, because most of these models, of course ChatGPT, are built upon language as a foundation. What's the value of that? What is the power of that? Is it important? Does it matter? Now definitions are the reason behind us being able to understand and perceive our world in the way that we do. Definitions and language are quite literally a tool that we have decided to come up with in our heads collectively agreed upon in order to achieve many of the things that we admire. It's the base plate of that. We are able to pick out and identify things because we have language. Now to make this easier to understand, I want to use an example. Let's take this way back to caveman times. One of our ancestors might see a tree and realize that the sticks fall off the tree. They can then collect up those sticks and use them to make a fire, let's say, and provide warmth at night. Super basic concept. Now, it might be possible for this individual to come up with all of these ideas on their own. But sharing those ideas with others is going to be a little bit difficult, unless you have language. We can define the tree with a word. Tree. Sticks. And use connecting words. Go to the tree. Gather the sticks. Put them in this array. And you can make a fire easier. And get these benefits out of the fire. You see, it's not possible. It is not possible to build cars, have electricity, computers, phones without language. It is the underlying tool. It is the roots of the whole operation here. That's why in some ways I think that language might actually be the biggest or most important invention that humans have ever came up with. I know it might seem like we're a little off track here, but hold on. If you have used ChatGPT, I know some of you might be new to AI, if you've used ChatGPT though, you understand that it generates text. It generates language. And it doesn't just generate text. It generates text that makes sense. It can be logical. It can be creative. And here's your first little hint here at the absolute power, the magnitude that AI has. Let's do a little thought experiment. We're going to go back in time yet again, but this time to, let's say, medieval days. Now, back in these days, these people did not have antibiotics, all right? I mean, you get a cut, you get an infection, it might be game over for you. If you were to travel back in time with just one book on how it all works, you could potentially change their world, save thousands of lives, by simply teaching them how to make antibiotics. Now in this thought experiment, we're cheating. We're saying that you can go back in time and take this book back with you. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? Well, in the context of AI, no it's not, because AI is essentially cheating. You see, yes, as a human race, it did take us quite some time to learn how to develop antibiotics and put them in use. We did that with novel trial and error, different thoughts, different exchanges of language. The thing is, AI can do all of that too. 
It can use language, it can reason across language, and it can come up with new ideas. It's not limited to the previous collection of human knowledge. The only thing that it is potentially limited by is the amount of compute power, and of course, the human languages themselves. So circling this around, AI is essentially Pandora's box. The answers, the solutions to many of the problems we face here on Earth might just be a few prompts away with a large language model. If you believe that the languages we use here on Earth can be strung together in a way that could teach us how to solve world hunger, create much, much more efficient and safe sources of energy, etc, etc. If you believe that human languages can be strung together to produce those results, then there is no reason that AI shouldn't be able to do the same. You might be thinking, well, humans can do that too. Yes, they can, but they're way slower. And I know some of you who might know a little bit more about AI might say, well, this is just about language models. What about vision models? What about auditory models? The same exact principles also apply to these models as well. It's all the same. It's extremely powerful. And now that hopefully I have convinced you that AI technology is something that is powerful, it is something to be reckoned with, there are a lot of people out there who are AI doomers, AI haters, people who are terrified of this technology, worried that they might lose their jobs, and a lot of you might be expecting me as, you know, this AI propagator, this AI YouTube channel to say, don't be scared, it's all gonna be fine. But that's not something that I'm going to do. Because I would be lying if I said AI isn't a dangerous technology. Any technology, any technology that is very powerful has great propensity for good and also great propensity for bad. Examples of this are littered throughout history. When we figured out how to actually do more advanced metallurgy, creating iron tools, and we can also use them to win wars and hurt each other. Great propensity for good, great propensity for bad. Same thing can be said for explosives. Same thing can be said for nuclear technologies. Great power, great responsibility, both good and bad options. So the conversation now shifts or turns into, well, how do we mitigate the bad things that are possible with AI technology. And this is this is where it gets really tricky because everyone has a different perspective in life and everyone has different things that they believe are good or bad for them. So something that might be really good for someone else in the world of AI might be really bad for another person. A classic example would be the losing a job scenario. An artist who draws for a living might lose their job to an AI model that can essentially do their job just as well as they could. But the AI model works 24 seven, it works a lot faster than the artist and it costs way less. But on the flip side, the people that benefit from that company using AI instead of a real person could resolve itself as cheaper prices, thus more accessibility to that product. So one person loses their job, a lot of people get access to something for a lot cheaper. Good for one person, bad for another. I want to make this absolutely clear. I am not arguing for one side or another. I think any reasonable person would say that they want, you know, a quote unquote perfect world where we can all benefit and no one has to lose. But due to the nature of our circumstances here on Earth, we have always had to compete not only with nature and other creatures, but with each other for resources. Today, in this day and age, it's no different than it was. Sure, by the utilization of technology, quality of life on Earth has gone up dramatically across the board, but not equally across all countries and all people. If it is our goal, here on Earth as a species to trying to produce a greater and greater quality of life for all people. Well, first of all, I don't think that's ever truly possible to achieve, but I do think that the closest you're ever going to get is by utilizing AI technology to do so. Based on its sheer power, as I described earlier, it is going to be your best shot at solving some of these huge issues we have. Limited energy, limited food supply, I mean, the list goes on. If you truly want to solve these problems, I don't see any better technology for attempting to do so other than AI technology. Now diving into a little bit more of my own personal perspective on this, growing up I have always kind of been someone who hasn't exactly agreed with the beliefs that society has always collectively agreed on. 
I didn't exactly move with the flow of society in an easy fashion. I was the kind of kid where they would plop me in a seat in school and I would immediately be upset because why do I have to be here? Oh, well, you have to learn for your future, but why? Show me the dots, connect it for me. I'm a very critical person. I look at everything skeptically. And in a lot of situations, I don't just sit down and say, yep, that's just the way things are. There's gotta be another solution, there's gotta be another way. And thinking back, it's probably the reason I'm even making a YouTube video right now in the first place. Nevertheless, I've always, in some sense, despised the fact that we have to live and survive with an economic model in the first place. Of course, hey, grow up, alright? This is the way things are, we have limited resources, and not everyone just gets handed things for free. Well. Thinking long term, artificial intelligence is extremely powerful as we mentioned. It can put people out of jobs so much so that a human in the future probably won't be able to compete with any AI model at all, giving humans pretty much zero economic value. Yet we're having all of this production from AI. Is it possible for us to move towards a future long term where we no longer need an economic model. A future where AI technology is so advanced that it can handle itself even beyond what we're capable of perceiving. So much faster, so much smarter, so much more novel, and we are simply just taken care of by the AI. AI becomes a skeleton key, if you will. One key solves all problems. An infinity solution. And we as humble humans on Earth are just left to exist and be taken care of by our AI. Trust me, I understand if these words that I'm saying sound like a very crazy future, something very unrealistic, but I try not to let thoughts like that hold me back in life because quite frankly, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen or how it's going to happen. So personally, I'm hopeful for a future where AI can sort of just take care of the human race and allow us to explore our own individual passions without the limited economic model preventing us from doing so. Personally, the reason that I am so excited and enthusiastic about AI technology is I truly believe that it's our best shot at a future in which many of the problems humanity has struggled with since inception are now solved. I think it's super powerful, and I really do understand why so many people who are critical of AI might be very confused as to why we're trying to solve problems that take away jobs like artistry jobs. It seems weird, like, why are we trying to create AI art when we should be off trying to, of course, like I said earlier, solve world hunger with AI? I am of the belief that it is still very much the baby early stages of AI development. I mean, we have just barely scratched the surface. We just barely started. The reason that we're trying to solve problems like creative writing, creative art generation, video generation, isn't because AI companies want to steal the jobs and gain more profit by replacing artists. A machine learning researcher understands that the goal of training these models on art, video, audio, text, is to gain an understanding of our world. They're attempting to build a model that can reason, that can generalize, and actually interact with our world. With image models, with video models, the AI isn't just learning how to construct something that we find visually appealing. It's doing a lot more. It's learning quite literally, visually, what it might look like if someone were to pick up and hold a drink in their hands. What would it look like if someone took a sip of a drink? It understands visually the relationship between hand, drink, mouth, person, why they would drink in the first place. Art, media, etc. is literally a visual database. It's our collective human visual container that is something we can run through AI models in order to train them to understand the natural world. So in this sense, you could say that artists losing their jobs is merely a side effect of building these models. Make this abundantly clear, this is not something I am happy about by any means, but a part of me does worry that the pains of change, the pains of transitioning from an economic to a non-economic model might be really great. But now is a good time to mention, you do not have to agree with me. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your criticism. This is a conversation that we all need to have together as a society. I want to hear everyone's ideas. To sit here and think that just my idea, just my ideas alone are what's true and what is absolutely the only thing I'll accept is just absolutely crazy. I know there's plenty of smart people out there. There's plenty of people who have 
all kinds of ideas of what our future with AI might look like, and I'm sure a lot of you also have thoughts on the complexities of these things as well. I mean, this macro view that I just laid out for you guys sounds all fine and dandy, but how is it actually going to work? How could we transition from an economic model to a non-economic model because AI has become so abundant? I don't have the answers to these questions, I've thought about them, and they are absolutely head-scratching questions, but I know you guys are going to have your own thoughts. And with that being said, guys, I would encourage you very much so to engage in discussion, engage with your thoughts. Hell, maybe you should even run your thoughts through an AI model, because as we said earlier, the answers to our problems might just actually lie within the AI, so maybe the AI can help us solve the problems that it itself creates. That would be the ultimate hope. For those of you who are doubtful about the future of AI technology, continue to look at it with a critical eye. Please. Everyone, examine AI technology as it grows and point out any flaws that you see. When shaping technology as powerful as this, we want to make sure that we're looking everywhere as it grows. And for those of you who are a huge fan of AI and have a lot of fun with it, I know models with safety can really be annoying sometimes. But I hate to say it, safety is super important. The best approaches to safety the best ways to handle the economic imbalances that might be caused as we hopefully transition to this non-economic model. They just, they haven't been solved yet. I haven't heard them. I am so ready to move this conversation past this point and onto the next point of how are we going to deal with it? And maybe after I make this video, hopefully we can spark enough conversation to where I can produce another video and say, hey, look, here are some possible solutions. Here are some possible ways we can move forward with AI technology. But thank you for watching today's video. Thank you for listening to me. I hope we can all strive to produce a peaceful future in which individuals can explore their passions without being held back by economic barriers. I'll see you folks in the next video. Goodbye.